think of spirit, it has various definitions for me. Of course, I believe in something much greater than I am. Um, I, I do call that spirit God. Strength comes when you're forced to make choices. I know during the, um, you know, the hard times of anyone's life, in my life, when I've had difficult times, what I've, I've, I fall back on is, is really the purpose of my life. I tend to see my faith as uh, informing my ethics. It's not about what you believe, it's about what you do. I've always believed that my calling in life was to serve other people. Faith is how we help ourselves, how we believe in ourselves. Maybe spirit's how we show it to others, how we bring it forth in the world. I came in this country and this is my new home, so I wanted to know the people in America. So I start working as a volunteer in Lake County Memorial Hospital. In the course of my career as a nurse, I worked with people that didn't have faith, and I always felt for them because I didn't understand how they were gonna make it through whatever the situation was. If you have an inner strength and an inner spirit, you will be well all of your life. to Judaism, and this is directly associated with why I converted. Um, I was brought up Catholic, uh, left the church when I was 15, and spent about 20 years as an atheist. Um, and it wasn't until I was in my mid-30s that uh, I felt any need for religion again. Um, and the reason that I went back towards religion was because I had become a mother at the age of 35. Um, for 20 years I was an atheist and I was an anthropologist, and anthropology is the study of um, the human species as opposed to the human spirit. Well, I grew up in a little town called Ashtabula, east of Cleveland. It's a real working class town, and I used to, I've always joked that we had the Jack and Jesus wall. We had Jack Kennedy and a portrait of Jesus right next to each other in the living room. Um, and of course, my, my parents were very young. Uh, my parents were 19 when I was conceived, 20 when they had me. So they were um, very much invested in the Kennedy administration. My dad was a union organizer, and he worked for the power company there. So we were raised to believe that you don't accomplish much of anything unless you do it on behalf of others. When you do public service for the right reason, I don't know that you really know why you do it. It's just something that's in your heart. It's just something that makes you get up every day and say, uh, I'm going to do the people's work. It's just what I do. This is all about serving God's people. There's no other reason that we move from I'm taking care of me culture to I'm taking care of God's people. I'm serving others. And there's, there's wonderful people in our world today that have they have servant leadership as their, their way of living their life. They are here to be of service to others. It's getting more and more difficult because of our culture. My faith is drawn from knowing our history 
and from knowing that we will survive no matter what. Uh, I do believe that we have a destiny as a people and I draw great strength from that. What you believe and what you do should be a fit. They shouldn't be separated. Somebody shouldn't look at you and say, well, if you believe that, then why did you do this? And so I've always felt that what you believe, if you believe that we're all God's children, and then I got involved in the civil rights movement with Martin Luther King, that just to me seemed very logical. Because after all, I watched the suffering of what we would then refer to as blacks in this country, and it seemed the most logical thing that my faith taught me, my background taught me that this is something that I should get involved in. I didn't think about it as being dangerous or particularly brave or any of those things. It just seemed like a logical extension of, of my own beliefs and of what was expected of me. When I got married and I moved to Rachi, there was a very poor, poor uh, estate in India. And then there was um, the, the mothers was want to give away their babies so you know anybody, so they can at least eat. And I see a lot of poverty over there. And it's affect me a lot. The whole idea of faith and belief, I think that I was attracted to the rabbinate because of my faith and belief in people and seeing what people can do for each other and how people can help and heal each other. Um, and I think when one individual spirit touches another, we really have beautiful sparks, the idea of like sparks of God. Um, so I think that uh, I like to try to enlighten that spirit in other people. The life was pretty interesting. I mean, at that time, and I went in in the 70s, um, most of the day was really quiet, you know, silent, in that it was time for you to, you know, be praying or, you know, be meditating or thinking about, you know, your relationship with God and, and what that meant. And, and it really focused you in a different way. It made the work not just work, but it kind of elevated it to be almost sacramental so that, you know, it wasn't that you were, you know, just washing a floor, but you were doing it for the greater honor and glory of God. So everything took on a new meaning. And there's something about quieting. And I think now even more than ever, I mean, there's never a quiet moment. You know, we're on Beep or Page or Blackberries, uh, you know, emailing, you know, every, you know, 30 seconds. So there's no quiet time. There's no reflective time. And I think that that is why the nuns were so incredibly focused because they had time to really think through and they connected everything that they did to their mission and to what their work was. And that's what made them incredibly successful. Having um, decided to bring a religion back into my life after 20 years of atheism, um, I decided that from intellectual uh, uh, honesty alone, I should go back and look at the religion of my youth um, with an open mind again, as an adult. I had left the church when I was 15. I've changed a great deal since 1965, and so has the church. Uh, and I just felt that I needed to go back and, and give it another shot. Um, and I ended up writing The Sparrow because of that. Um, I made the best case I could for Catholicism with uh, bright, intelligent, well-meaning, well-educated people. Uh, and what I discovered was that I was a Jew, but I'm bilingual. I, I, I speak both Catholic and Jewish. <laughs> when you look at the political climate right now, uh, especially in light of the health care reform debate and how we have had to have metal detectors at some of Sherrod's public events because of the threats, um, I can't separate completely my personal feelings as a wife of a man whom, you know, I once said to Sherrod early when we started dating, um, you've been fighting for the people I come from your entire career. I was very aware of that. Um, and I know how much he takes to heart what he does, but I also know that one of the things we started doing when we first met is we pray together. Um, we, we have a very strong faith in um, what 
what God, we think God would want us to do. And we, we, we are deeply flawed. We acknowledge that every day. Um, you try to overcome your flaws so you can do a little bit of good in the world. There is a spirit that is the property of women that I think we don't recognize very often. There's a kind of purpose and spirit that many women that I know, I could name them, and uh, the women that have inspired me, the women that in fact have conquered all kinds of odds, have lived through difficult situations, and they still have come out as loving people. It doesn't just happen to women, but I think it plays out in women in very special ways. So I, I never have been able to understand why in a country that has so many faiths and so many people who have such strong beliefs that we still have questions around um, diversity. Why do we? I, I, I don't understand it. Um, but I think that's how we work together. Just by drawing on our faith and not drawing on what is different, but to start to draw and to look at the commonalities. And then I think we'll find many. I really do think we can find a lot more we have in common than on things that we differ. <laughs>